Hi there. Welcome to a brief video on how to design a needs assessment. My name is Mutsa Carol Chinyamakobu, and I am from datalab.africa. If you're new to this channel, welcome. We talk about all things monitoring and evaluation. Now, let's get right into today's content. We're going to kick off the discussion with a definition of a needs assessment, and then we'll talk a little bit about why it's important, what is the purpose of doing a needs assessment, and then we'll go into detailed steps on how to actually conduct one. Now, what is a needs assessment? It is a technique or a data gathering process that we use in m and &E to evaluate what an organization needs. And I do have to emphasize that it is the what question that we are trying to answer um, as opposed to the how. Um, so this would precede what we call a gap analysis, which then goes into assessing how to close that gap once we know what the gap is. So a needs assessment specifically focuses on what is the gap? What is it that our organization needs to improve or to be more effective or to be more efficient? And this could be an organization or really it could just be a project that you want to run or a program that you want to run. And before you run it, you want to assess the gap that your program or project would be filling. Now, why is this necessary? In many workplaces, um, they tend to be kind of intricate associations that comprise of many different professionals and departments, and everybody's got different objectives. And since we've got so many factors present in that environment, a needs assessment helps to remove uncertainty by exploring the specific needs and the actions that can be taken to attain them. A needs assessment also integrates all the concerns from all your different levels of stakeholders. It can consider the smallest and largest statuses within the business or the project from the micro right to the macro level to determine a plan of action that elevates the entire organization or improves um, your project plan. And finally, a needs assessment really does facilitate better planning. Ultimately, you want to be in a position to implement something that you know is needed and will be used. So it results in an informed analysis of how best to move forward. And with all those complexities having been taken into account and all the stakeholders having been involved um, in contributing their concerns, your result is a more informed plan. Now, let's go into how you can conduct your needs assessment. This is going to be a detailed set of steps. And really, it's not going to go into the types of data collection tools. Um, that will be the content for another video. Um, you can use different tools, quantitative, qualitative tools. You can use a combination. And um, you use what's specific to your your context and, and what you're trying to elicit. But I'll just go into principles um, in terms of the steps to conducting one. So first of all, you have to clarify your objectives. When you have multiple stakeholders with different objectives that dip, that sometimes um, can even contradict or, or not necessarily contradict, but just not be well aligned, it's important to identify what the objectives of your particular assessment are and to align your stakeholders on these before you get, begin your assessment. You want to end up with a clear and applicable recommendation. So knowing what your objectives are is key. Secondly, you measure and you allocate your resources. You really have to be realistic about your resources and your capacity you have to understand your limitations. If your resources are few, then perhaps you can only run an online survey. And if that is the case, then consider your questions carefully. Your invitation email to the survey and even your thank you email can also be sources of data. So really think about what scope you have 
um, in terms of resources and allocate appropriately. Number three, collect data internally. And the data that you get internally really speaks to your context. If your problem is complex, then collect some secondary data first to understand the current state of the situation. Look at reports and dashboards, look at systems and see what information you can garner. Then you'll be able to ask related and relevant questions to your stakeholders. And only then will you be able to craft a survey that then fills in any remaining gaps. It's important to work with what data you have already first and that's what we call secondary data data that's already available only after that think about collecting data collecting primary data because that can be a costly exercise another way um, to collect data is observations you can observe teams at work you can observe trainers in workshops um, you can observe project teams having a status meeting Different kinds of observations can also yield data to help you understand the context. Number four, collect external data. And external data helps you understand the influence of what you are about to implement or what you're about to recommend for implementation. You have to identify who these external data sources are that will be influenced by the change and collect data around their understanding of the problem and their engagement with the current context. Number five, dive deep into your data analysis. Now, I really could have just said analyze your data here, but it's important to understand that a needs assessment actually elicits various kinds of data and you're trying to understand root causes. So you really have to do a comprehensive analysis. Depending on the nature of your data, you may want to develop graphs or tables or other visuals to display data. And also you may want to develop a narrative that describes your results. Once you've got your analysis, take a step back. Think about the cross-cutting themes that may apply to multiple needs assessment activities that you've incorporated and use those cross-cutting themes to help inform priorities for action. Address each objective that you've set out in step one. Do all this remembering that really anyone who is reading this report that you are going to write is looking for a set of prioritized steps to take. They are looking to know which solution is right for each need with compared costs and benefits of implementation. And so your analysis needs to facilitate their decision-making process. Number six, and very importantly, get feedback. Share your findings with others and listen to their feedback so that you can find potential challenges or limitations that you perhaps didn't notice while working on your recommendations. This is a really important step because you don't want to ultimately share a final output that isn't applicable because you didn't think about um, the feasibility of applying the solutions that you are recommending. So get your feedback before you finalize your report. And then once you do have your feedback and you have adjusted, share your findings and take action. You've done the work at this stage. Everything is done. You can now share what you found with both your internal and external stakeholders. This helps to ensure that everybody who is involved in the project is on the same page regarding the priorities and the resource allocation. And I do include the take action step, even though this is a difficult one to, to implement or to take on as an evaluator. Um, normally, once you share the report, nobody wants you at the table anymore. But um, it's important as an evaluator to try and kickstart the solution design process. This is because often these reports end up sitting on a shelf and people see how much money it takes and they say, okay, well, let's work out if we've got um, the resources for this and then it just never gets done. So try and kickstart the solution design process. You can share 
your um, findings with the organization's employees, and then you can help them figure out um, what processes, systems, or tools will be changing over the next few weeks or months or years, and even help them develop a work plan. You don't have to go too far into um, the action part of this, but kickstarting really does help to get the ball rolling. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for your attention. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, do share and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. You can reach me at mutsa at datalab.africa if you would like um, any trainings for your teams or perhaps some one-on-one -on -one support or assistance with your projects. Our website is www.datalab.africa. Thanks very much for listening and see you next time.